in this most contentious rivalry. Are you blue or red? Under the lights at Lavelle Edwards Stadium in Provo, Utah, welcome to ESPN's college football finale tonight. It's the 95th edition of the Utah Utes taking on the BY Cougars. BYU has lost three straight contests to the rivals up the road. There's a look at the series history. In fact, Utah has won eight of the last 11, and the series takes a two-year break, keep in mind, after this year's game. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones alongside Brock Heward. Lewis Johnson is downstairs. He'll be joining us in just a moment. Brock, these two schools separated by just 50 miles of Interstate 15. And up and down the corridor this week, there's been the usual animosity and enmity punctuated by the mysterious circumstances surrounding the suspension of a BYU player. More on that a little bit later. But this rivalry means so much for so many different reasons to so many people. And I would say personal. There's so many good rivalries, great rivalries in all of college football. And many times it's a tradition, the history, the helmets. This one you got a sense from both sides. As we talk to the coaches throughout the week, the players, the more we've been around here, the word I keep coming back to is personal. And these coaches don't run from that at all. Hey, speaking of coaches, Bronco Mendenhall has been a longtime member of this rivalry, the head coach of BYU. Coming off a win against Texas a couple of weeks ago, they put up some huge numbers, but not in the way that the fans here are used to seeing it from. You come into the Hall of Fame here and you see Detmer and Steve Young, Jim McMahon, those guys known for throwing the ball all over the yard. Bronco Mendenhall said, if I'm going to take this program to the next level, we've got to change course. We've got to play faster than anybody in college football, and you're going to see them run more than you've ever seen with that Royal Blue. Speaking of Utah, head coach Winningham, Kyle Winningham has been on both sides of it as a player with BYU, as a coach now with Utah. And he says, hey, this is a great time to play our rivals because we're trying to get over a big loss last week. That's right. We're still early in the season. You're so used to these rivalry games win at the end of the year. Well, Kyle's still learning his team, but there's nothing to learn about this rivalry. He's been involved in, as he told us, nearly 40 years in his team. And even for those guys that have not been a part of it, well, they're going to learn that emotion really quickly. Trying to make it four in a row against BYU. And for more on the rivalry, downstairs to Lewis. Hey, Mark, tensions and emotions are very high down here. I mean, it is a pressure cooker when it comes to emotions. And we saw just a moment ago the Utah Utes coming out onto the field. And there's some history here in the past as scripted. BYU, BYU comes out first. They head to the far sideline. And then Utah likes to go over and do a little jawing and talking. Well, it was interesting to see that the referees were out on the field to make sure that the Utes got to their near sideline. You know, it's hard to believe, but you know emotions are going to be a big deal. But Bronco Mendenhall telling us this week that it is amazing that he gets critical criticized for not showing enough emotion on the on the sideline the head coach he says he tries to remain even keeled even though this game is very personal for him and of course there are big program implications Mendenhall says he tries to get his players to stay focused and stay in the present focus only on their assignments until the whistle blows and on the other side of the field Kyle Whittingham told us that if you get over the top and out of control bad things can happen guys this game is going to be all about controlling your emotions my suggestion to you guys up there and everybody watching Buckle your seatbelts, man. Lewis, this crowd is turned up right now. And there's a look at the key stat that we talked about in our meetings and all week. One team runs the ball very well. The other team is going to have to stop it, Brock. BYU winning the toss. Deferring to the second half. Utah will receive. Utah, Sean McClellan will take a knee and take the touchback. It'll come out. Well, so many intriguing matchups on both sides of the line of scrimmage tonight. And there are some really talented players out here. Kyle Van Noor, number three for BYU, one of the keys to this game. There he is 
as talented as the players we'll see maybe all year Brock you're going to really enjoy his versatility tonight he plays the run in the pass he gets after the quarterback he'll drop into coverage and he'll do it all effortlessly keep an eye on number three Mel Kuyper he's got him in the first round on his recent big board for a reason he's fun to watch play this game from the 25 first and 10 Wilson slings it complete and first down out to the 37 yard line the ball came loose but afterwards Sean Fitzgerald picking up 11 on the play there's a look at Travis Wilson six foot seven a sophomore last week in the loss against Oregon State ran for three touchdowns passed for two more albeit in a loss with some very prolific numbers James Bubba Poole in the backfield behind him to his left and this is Poole Tough sledding ahead, picks up about two. Tyler Beck filling in for the suspended Spencer Hadley, making the stop. Wilson took a beating a season ago as a true freshman, really thrown into fire of a Utah group offensively that had very little identity. What do they do? Well, they bring in Dennis Erickson, and you know what he wants to do. The vertical passing game, that run that plays off the strength of Wilson's arm. Second and eight, it's Poole again. Can't get to the edge. Run down from behind. And that's going to be a loss of about four on the play. Manu Maleuna with the tackle. That's well done early. Thank Get you. used to it. <laughs> that's six syllables, and there's many of them. And he's a fifth-year senior in the stud in the middle of that BYU defense. It's going to be a problem for Utah if they become one-dimensional and get in these third and extra long situations. Watch three, Van Noy off the edge, and Fua as well. Two very good defensive ends rushing the passer. Drez Anderson has been the go-to receiver this year. Over the middle, incomplete. Intended for both Murphy and Anderson in the neighborhood. And it's fourth down. Good pressure up front by Juan Eunga. Tom Hackett will come into punt. Remember Mendenhall Bronco calls those plays defensively for BYU told us very clearly if Travis Wilson's in third and extra longs that's going to be in our favor throughout the evening. J.D. Falstaff staying at his own 20. Takes it on the run at the 27. And push out of bounds at the 33 a six yard return on the 39 yard punt and the Cougars will have their first possession in pretty decent field position. And on comes the starting quarterback Taysom Hill completing only 33 percent of his passes but he has been a prolific runner so far this year. Watch how fast BYU plays offense right now through two games for BYU no one plays faster. They hand it off on first down that's Jamal Williams number 21 actually that's Paul Lasique. And Lasica gains about two yards. And they run a play every almost 18 seconds. Just under 18 seconds. Fastest in the nation. Second down and eight. Hill with plenty of time. And incomplete. A little bit of contact downfield as Cody Hoffman was down there. Ended up on his backside. The game within the game. Yes, BYU is going to run it all over the place, but they're going to want to take their shots, and that's Keith McGill. He's six foot three, converted safety. Their corner outside, and watch six three and six four and two physical guys on the perimeter all evening. Third and eight, Hill to pass, incomplete. His receiver falling again. That was Hoffman again, and it's three and out for BYU offensively on their first possession. That's a big man, Keith McGill. A rough week. The entire Utah defense on the back end. Over 450 passing yards for Sean Mannion in Oregon State. And that's a good way to respond. Coming out, you get a three and out. They attack you twice. You get off the field. Be such a key for them tonight. Keep that BYU offense that loves tempo, churning those first downs. Keep them on the sidelines. Scott Arlano's standing in his own 19. Averaging a little over 41 yards per punt. Jeffrey Norwood at his own 22. End over end kick out of bounds. No flags on the play. And they spot it at about the 25 yard line. Each team is at it once. Second possession for the Utes when we come back.
great trap during this rivalry last year. Star Latulale blocking Justin Sorensen's field goal from 51 right there with one second left. The officials put time back on the clock after the fans rushed the field. The Cougars would get another shot from 15 yards closer and off the right upright. And it ends in bitter defeat for BYU as Utah won its third consecutive game against their rivals. A great backdrop for this year's setting. On first and 20, this is Bubba Poole getting to the edge. Poole with some room, it's a foot race. And Bubba takes it down to the 25. Tripped up finally by Craig Bills. He's one of a couple of home run hitters on that team. Coach Whittingham said this was his best group, most physical group from left tackle to right tackle that he's had in Salt Lake City. And when they get their hands on you, the big paws on you, they're tough to get off those blocks. And if they can do that for Poole, he's got some jets. Here he is again, has a couple of pulling offensive linemen in front of him. And got a few yards on that one. Poole supplanted Kelvin York from the starter's job. And now he'll get a breather. York was injured in that first game of the season for Utah. Under two and a half to go here in the first quarter. Zeros on the scoreboard. Second and six. Watch that vertical passing game here with the tight ends in particular. This is York. Seeing his first action after missing last week. Picks up about three on the play. York, a nice compliment to James Poole. A little bit bigger in size. Third down and four coming up. But what do you like here on this call if you're Utah? Well, they've been effective with Travis running the football. He's their leading rusher, number seven there, keeping plays alive. Been a lot of pressure from BYU. I'd like to protect and give him a chance to buy a little time. Wilson was hit as he released it. And it's incomplete. Fourth and four coming up. And guess Kyle who? Van Noy. That's exactly right. Guess who? He's lined up in different spots tonight. The numbers aren't off the charts here early, but you can't twist and loop any better than that. Do you see how tight he was? So many guys will waste real estate when they run those line stunts. Time and again, he does not every single inch he gains. And that's why he often gets home and forces the impact on these quarterbacks. Andy Phillips, the erstwhile skier, now place kicker, attempting this one from 36 yards out. Hadn't done much of it in his lifetime, but that was picture perfect. With 1.30 to go in the first quarter, the Utes get on the scoreboard first. Back under the lights at Lavelle Edwards Stadium in Provo, Utah. Mark Jones, Brock Heward, Lewis Johnson down to the field. Utah getting on the scoreboard. Courtesy of that 36-yard field goal a moment ago. One and a half to go in the first period. Neither team able to establish much offense yet. And Hina out of the end zone. Got a little alley, a flag thrown, and he's pushed out of bounds. Oh, they're saying he's still in bounds. Hina going to take it all the way back. But will it stand? There's a flag down on the field at the 34. During the return, on the return team, number five, holding the penalty is from the spot of the foul. First down. Alani Fua, the perpetrator. So that'll come back. It'll be first down and 10. First down and 10 and nowhere to go. Williams brought down immediately. And I love what Utah is doing. They are not messing around. When you put that Texas tape on, and unfortunately for Manny Diaz, his last game he coordinated, they were hesitant. They were in between all night long. U Utah is attacking. Algernon Brown on that last carry, and it stopped up. It's Williams now for about three on the play. Third down again. Third and long. The 
This is where Hill can hurt you. And he's brought down right at that first down marker. Where do they spot it? They're going to spot it a little bit short. Fourth down, under a minute to go here in the first quarter. He picked up nine, needed ten. We're going to run it down and think about it during the break. Or is there anything to think about? Well, right? what they've got to think about is getting this run game going early because if they don't do it and they've got to rely on this passing attack throughout the night, that's advantage Utah. That's the end of the first 15 minutes of play in the 95th chapter of BYU versus Utah. Cougars down three when we come back. I was hoping we'd be related, but uh, not quite so fortunate. Jeffrey Norwood back to get this punt, standing at his own 34-yard line for the Utes. Rano with a spiral that comes down, and boy, he's hit immediately on the 43-yard punt. Let's go downstairs to Lewis. All right, Mark, let's take a look at the FaceTime profile brought to you by Edward Jones. And the big surprise of the season for Utah has been their place kicker, Andy Phillips, just put three points on the board for the Utes. A 24-year-old had never played a football game before this season. Can you believe that? Soccer for one year and then spent five years as a member of the U.S. national ski team. A lot to his story. I had a chance to chat with him before the game, and maybe we'll get that to folks in just a minute. Mark? All right, Lou, back to you in a sec. First down and 10. Pretty good starting field position here at the 35. Poole gets about two. Let's go back to Lewis. Well, Mark, after soccer and then five years as a member of the U.S. National Ski Team, I asked Phillips before the game, you know, why kicking? How did this happen? Well, he said after retiring from ski racing back in November of 2012, he was looking for something to fulfill him again. And so it was during Thanksgiving, kicking with the family during a Thanksgiving game, got the bug, decided to make a New Year's resolution, and the rest is history. Wow, what a story. Great story. Wilson using his legs here, tiptoes out of bounds near the first down. Right at the 45 yard line. Travis Wilson last week threw for three touchdowns against Oregon State and Brock. No, what was really impressive about him was the way he kept bouncing back after those interceptions. Competitive will is what Dennis Erickson said. And that run game is a changeup. They're not going to live with it at 6'7, 230. You don't want to put him in harm's way, but he shows you, hey, if you overcommit to that inside run, he is capable of pulling it for 142. Pass complete on the outside. That's Sean Fitzgerald into BYU territory at the 45-yard line. And now this Utah offense getting some rhythm, Brock. What are they doing? And while they're not up-tempo as nearly as much as some of the units around college football, but this is what they like to do. You asked earlier about Dennis Erickson. Not only is it the vertical passing game, it's also that quick passing game. You remember for so many years at the U, what did he do? Get the ball out to my guys on the perimeter, play to their strengths and their speed. Little draw play to York. He's had the hot hand on this drive. Got about a yard. Second down coming up. And I can promise you, within the course of this game, if they can get that run going between the tackles, they will run that same action. They will get those safeties and those linebackers to bite, and then they hit their home runs down the field. Second and nine. Wilson hits his receiver. Drez Anderson breaking tackles inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. Daniel Sorensen finally dragging him down. But another Ute first down after the 26 yard game. And another what? Quick pass. You want to stunt? You want to blitz? You want to throw all these exotic looks at us? We'll take three steps. We'll get it out of the hands. A couple missed tackles. And Anderson showing you why he is their big play receiver. off to York and York might have gotten a yard Wilson gonna tuck it under and run and stopped after a gain of about three on the play. Remember last week he scored on a 35-yard touchdown run last week and actually scored the go-ahead touchdown late on a run in the fourth quarter. A 24-yard scamper. Third and five.
Just one of six on third down so far, Utah. Wilson double clutched and incomplete. Intended for Sean Fitzgerald in fourth down coming up. A missed opportunity taps his chest says my bad. And fourth down coming up in comes the place kicker. Andy Phillips looking for his second field goal tonight. This one from straight away. <laughs> 32 yards. And Phillips has accounted for all six points in this football game so far. Will it get physical tonight? Hey, man, it already is. Hat to hat. Chest to chest. Say it with your chest. Cougar Partisans camping out. Got the iPad, got the television sets. Trying to get the good tickets for tonight's game. And inside. Later, many hours later. Brock, how surprised are you by the low scoring game so far? Well, I'm surprised that BYU cannot get anything going in that run game. And that's a real credit to Utah, the defensive group coming in that was giving up less than 100 yards a game and a defensive line that's really taking pride in their work tonight and stuffing that early down run. CK on the kickoff return. And chopped down at the 25. Maybe first down and 10 from the 28 yard line. Hill hands it off to Williams, and Jamal Williams with a nice gain over that right side. Brock, we talked about this BYU offensive line a little bit. They use a lot of bodies. They sure do, and they're playing a couple true freshmen, and they're going to run those guys in and out. But again, 96 plays, the first two game average, well under that pace, and four three and outs. Screen pass set up complete. That's Falslev, and J.D. Falslev's picks up at 11 for the first down. And I like this. Some outside run. It's been particular and in particular inside run between the tackles early. A little screen. You got to start to give this defense a few different looks. Hill hands it off to Williams. And Williams met at the 47 yard line. Good stick that time by Michael Walker, the strong safety. Joined by Mike Cunnicutt. Three yard gain on the play. Looking downfield, threads the needle, and it's complete. Caught by Cody Hoffman. Wow. He's a difference maker. I love what Robert and I said to us, offensive coordinator. The coaching goes out the window once the ball is in the air. It's all his natural skill and talent. That's a throw behind. He is covered, but Taysom trusts his big receiver, puts it in his vicinity, and he typically comes down with it. First and ten from inside the 20. The CK uh, got about two on first down. Looked like that time uh, the Cougars were late getting a little personnel on the field, Brock. Perhaps they're still making an adjustment to this high-speed offense. Second and seven. And the pressure on Hill. And now pushed out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Jacoby Hale making the tackle for the Utes. Third down coming up. And as rough a start as this has been for BYU and all those three and outs, the lack of touchdowns by Utah in the red zone. It's kept this game awfully close and a big third down opportunity here. This is where I like my best players, either quarterback run or Cody Hoffman at the bottom of the screen. Looking up top and into the end zone incomplete. And fourth down coming up for the Cougars. Lasique was the closest receiver in the neighborhood. There's going to be a, a development here with Taysom. And, and Coach and I yesterday, I liked it. He talked about the patience and Bronco men and all as well. The patience that we've got to have. As fast as you're going to play this game, you can never play rushed. You can never play in a hurry. And I think there's still opportunities and big opportunities for this offense to find itself and slow itself down in big moments. Justin Sorensen from 34. And he pulled it off to the left. 
He missed it. He had been five of five on the season. That his first miss. And a game of inches, always crucial in this rivalry. There's that double move up top, wide open. Dres Anderson still on his feet. And the turbo jet kicking in. Anderson. Ball came loose, but he's marked down. They're going to mark it at the one yard line. A 74 yard gain, first and goal. You knew it was coming. You knew the double move eventually. You run all that quick game to set these plays up, and what a tremendous call. That's why Dennis Erickson's won national championships. That's why Kyle Whittingham brought him to Salt Lake City. Yes, they've been patient, Mark. Yes, it's been a little bit slow developing. And then you go for the jugular. First down call, your own end. That's tremendous execution on a play that you've seen set up through this first half. Anderson. Five catches over 100 yards. His third game already this year, over 100 yards receiving. First and goal. They fake the fly sweep. And Wilson stopped up short at about the one. Wilson, a pretty good runner. Although it's, sometimes it takes a while for that 6 7 frame to unfold and get going. Van Noy in on the stop. Second and goal coming up. Neither team with a touchdown yet in this game. And he played almost a full half. And if you're Utah here, you may want to think about as fast as BYU plays, using up the time on that play clock. Broke the tailback. Into the end zone and wide open touchdown Denham. Mm -hmm. Anthony Denham was left wide open in the flat. For his first touchdown catch of the season and his career. But the big play on the drive set up by Drez Anderson. <laughs> Phillips with the extra point. And Utah leads 13-0. And that was the last time that BYU was shut out in the first half. You'd have to go all the way back to the 2012 point set bowl against San Diego State. This from a school that has a reputation and a signature for potent offenses, especially throwing the football, but oh, how times have changed. They've been a lot more prolific and productive running the football this year as opposed to throwing in tonight. Zero, folks. Zero points after 30 minutes. Let's go downstairs to Lewis. All right, Mark, thanks very much. Coach, give us a few words on the way your defense is really pitching a shutout against the BYU offense. Yeah, defense is playing well. We're getting pressure on the quarterback. We're executing our uh, reads properly on the zone option. And we're playing pretty good in pass coverage. So playing pretty decently on all fronts defensively. And how about your kicker, the ex-skier Andy Phillips, keeping you in the game early? It gives you a smile. It does. It does. It's uh, He's been a great weapon for us through the first uh, you know, four games. So we hope it continues. All right, Coach, thanks. Thank you. Mark? One of Coach Whittingham's favorite memories is the time that they shut BYU out. Three to nothing a decade ago. 13 nothing at the break. Right now we're going to go back to the BMW Halftime Report. Wendy and the gang in the studio. And welcome back everyone to Lavelle Edwards Stadium here. 13 nothing for Utah so far in the 95th edition of the Utes against the Cougars. Mark Jones chopping it up with Bronk Heward, Lewis Johnson down on the sidelines. Joining us shortly, you know, players that are from outside this region learn quickly about the intensity of this rivalry, a.k.a. Des Anderson, the leading receiver for Utah after the first half. He learned after his freshman year, <laughs> and now he's acclimated to the point where he's been a big weapon for them. But, Brock, at the top of the show, we talked about the run defense against the run, BYU's ability to run. How do you see that storyline so far? Utah's dominated it in 4-3 and outs for BYU, the lack of run game and establishing their identity. Whenever you play good defense, you take the strength away of your opponent, and that's what the Utes did in the first 30 minutes of the ball. And BYU is going to get a chance to put their offense back on the field here to start the third quarter of play. Going to 
take it out. CK short of the 25 and let's go back to what we were talking about uh, what has Utah done offensively to make things work patience short passing game a veteran offensive coordinator and Dennis Erickson said okay you're going to give me the quick passing game we'll continue to take it because eventually those crumbs will lead to the big cookie the inside run they got out one time but he never got away from the identity and the philosophy and then right before half there's the sluggo. There is the slant and go and the payoff for all of that patience early. As good as the defense played for Utah. And a good shot of Travis Wilson. You knew they were setting up that big play. And Taysom Hill completes his first pass of the third quarter to Cody Hoffman. Remember, at the end of the first half, they were having a very uh, a boisterous and vociferous conversation on the sidelines trying to get on the same page. They did right there, and those two guys to play a key part you'd think if they're going to be successful tonight hill keeps it this time and stumbled over the 28 yard line falling right near that first down marker jared norris there you see jared norris doing exactly what kyle whittingham told lewis going into halftime our guys are playing their assignments when you play the zone read like the old option ball everybody has got their assignment to play and utah been very sound give them a ton of credit for shutting down this run game he pulls it out of the tailback's gut, and Hill on the moose. Taysom Hill on the move. Out of bounds all the way at the 15. You knew there would be some adjustments coming out of halftime. One of the adjustments for Taysom continue to ride that play fake on that zone read. And he may be the fastest offensive player for BYU. Remarkable what a completion on third and extra long does to the confidence of an offense and a quarterback. Their deepest territory tonight. And Williams between the tackles down to the 13. But about two on the play. They passed a lot more than they have in the previous game against Texas by design, or is that something the defense is making them do? No, absolutely not. Utah has taken away that run. Texas never could, could never get BYU off the field in that run game. Second and eight. Lasique fumbles it. Williams picks up the loose ball and is brought down back at the 13. So it's a net gain of maybe a yard on the play after all is said and done. And this isn't the rugby player trying to toss it back. No, that's... Utah continuing to be very aggressive. Nice tackle there by Eric Rowe to rip and tear. These third downs in the red zone, this is where BYU must execute. Hill, back shoulder fade, blocked away. Defended well by Justin Thomas. Incomplete intended for Matthews. And it's fourth and seven. On comes Justin Sorensen. I like the idea that's a six foot six inch wide receiver but probably not the execution you want with a throw behind put some air on it let him go jump ball for it Sorensen missed earlier tonight from 34 low snap but he knocks this one through remember it was Sorensen last year that hit it off the upright to end the game so BYU scores early here in the second half. Back live in Provo as BYU and Utah going at it here in the third quarter. Well, at the top of the week and also at this halftime minute, Bronco Mendenhall coming out telling us that he knew Utah would try and stop the run. Well, they got a little bit of offensive production as his third quarter started. It was a field goal, but that's what they needed to have happen. As for Taysom Hill, I asked him as he came out, what does he need to do? And he said, number one, Hill needs to make some better decisions whether or not to give the ball or hand it off. He's hoping that Hill will kind of get on track with his throwing strikes. But now a little bit of energy generated here in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And I still think, Mark and Brock, that this stadium is still waiting for something big to happen to explode. Yeah, it certainly feels that way, Lewis. We're able to get some points though on the board, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Folks. Wilson at quarterback, 14 of 20 as we enter the third quarter, running it here. And he falls forward, gains about four on the play. Had some big plays last week, scored the go-ahead touchdown late against Oregon State in the fourth quarter on a 24-yard run, and then the game-tying touchdown with 21 seconds to play in regulation before finally bowing in overtime to the Beavers. Second and six. Yeah. 
squeezes it in a tight window complete to Denham. Denham picks up five. Third and short coming up. I told you earlier, Van Noy does a little bit of everything, and you're exactly right. That's as tight a window as you're going to find. And one of the advantages of being six foot seven is short intermediate passes. Wilson does a very nice job of fitting those throws. <laughs> In some coverage, it's been pretty good in between the hashes. Well, one of eight on third down. He's going to run it himself, and he won't get there. Stopped up short. Manu Malulea with the stop. And an excellent job there. Anytime you see a defensive tackle make a play in short yardage, nine out of ten times it's because they get their hands on that offensive lineman first and you see him shed that block have the wherewithal and the awareness in a short yardage situation to stuff it and get his offense the ball right back fourth and short rugby style pick by Hackett also have any chance to return it <laughs> Out to the 27-yard line, 47-yard punt, and a four-yard return. Brock, you almost sense that the momentum has swung in BYU's favor a little bit. What do you think? What does Lou Holtz always say in every post-game show, pre-game show? That momentum going into halftime and coming out is so critical. Coach knows that. He's been around it so long and seen so many of these games. And the fact that BYU came out on that third and 11, circle that play, got the completion, that got the offense going, a three and out, and you get the ball right back. Jason Hill was sharp on that last drive. Williams with a nice game near the first down and mad at himself for not breaking that tackle. And now a little extra curricular activity. The game just started, folks. Braden Kersley, number 55. Backup right guard and plays a little center as well. Second and one. Throws it out on the play field. Plenty of time to throw. And completed the 40-yard line to Mitch Matthews, who's quickly becoming one of his favorite targets. A 25-yard game. Kersley back in the ball game now at center. The quick slant incomplete. Intended for Brett Thompson. How tough is it as a player, Brock, to get that mental focus back? Very, very challenging. I think easier offensively here so you can set the terms and dictate a little bit. But all the emotion, all the hatred, all the rivalry ta we've talked about all night long out the window when you witness what we just did. Elisa, pardon me, Michael Elisa with a nice run. And now we got a little altercation on the far side of the field at the far hash. It's Brandon Kersley who had his helmet ripped off a couple of plays ago. Faunuko and him going at it. Billy Senni Faunuko and Braden Curry. You're going to see him right here at the 25 yard line. Some extra curricular activity. And again, they're letting him play. Hill on the move. Take it off. Taysom Hill stopped short at the four yard line but it'll be first and goal for the Cougars an 18 yard scamper from the three this is how you respond and off all the way back to Lisa and he's brought down at the seven yard line little unconventional looking play. This is called offloading in rugby, and that's exactly, you see the ease with La CK there. Unfortunately, they could not out leverage the Utah defense. We had a hunch <laughs> we may see a little rugby play from the professional rugby player. Second and goal, 11 play the drive. Hill keeps it himself, trying to get to the edge, and is pushed out of bounds, short of the end zone. They'll spot it at the two, Jason Winningham there again. He picked up four, and it's third and goal. Mm -hmm. 
New personnel package for the defense as well. Better be very aware of Hill, the runner here inside the three. Looking into the end zone and sacked back to the 13. Great pursuit by Jacoby Hale. And it's fourth down, and in comes the field goal unit. And I think in self-evaluation, they're going to look at all these third downs in the red zone. You can see the struggles scoring, but it's been the third down execution in these moments. And I'd sure like to see him on the move rather than having to read and react so much as the field condenses. Sorensen in for this field goal from 31 yards out. And then he knocks it through. Now to within a touchdown of Utah. About five and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. In plenty of time, and in this rivalry, six of the last eight times these two have met, it's been the final possession that has decided the outcome. And Utah better not get too conservative offensively. Take it out, McClellan. And rocked at the 13-yard line. BYU a little bit jacked up here in the third quarter. Poole in the backfield. They throw it, and what a catch. All the way out of the 37-yard line, Jake Murphy, the son of former baseball player Dale Murphy, the former NL MVP. Whose dad, by the way, went to BYU. And Jake himself committed to BYU at one point before finally flipping and going to the other side, Utah. First down and 10. 24 yard gain. Wilson with a play fake. Pressure coming. Got rid of it just in time. And Poole showing that he can be a pretty good receiver, too. Picked up six. And the big fella took a hit, Brock. And this is Van Noy. He's been dancing in and out of that box in the tackle box in the run game. Delivered a bunch of blows tonight on these running backs and Travis Wilson. The stat sheet may not show it tonight with all the sacks and tackles for loss, but you're seeing the impact of, I think, the best player on this football field tonight. Travis Wilson now 17 of 24. Throws it into traffic, and it was caught, wow, miraculously, by Sean Fitzgerald. Picked up the first down. Man, how many guys were around that football? That'd be four, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> four blue shirts, and the guy in red caught it. This is exactly what Utah's defense needed after being on the field for the majority of the third quarter. Give them an opportunity to rest up before the ever-important final 15 minutes. 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. Wilson gives it to Poole. He's met immediately at the line of scrimmage. No gain. And 45 minutes are finally in the books in this 95th edition of Red against Blue. Utah against BYU. Second and nine, Utes. Little heat coming, and Drez Anderson, the hot receiver with the hot hand, makes the catch for the first down. Little pressure that time by BYU? Yeah, and you figure you're going to get back to what's been the bread and butter through this game, and that's getting the ball to your best player, Anderson. You've lost your two tight ends, your top tight ends for the night. Expect to see a bunch of the plays going out to the perimeter and the strength being Anderson. Ooh, following his big offensive line. And he gets a nice gain of about five on the play. Rez Anderson, who made that last catch, has already had three games this year of over 100 yards receiving. He has 125 yards tonight. And the meter is still running. A really jovial 
outgoing young man who enjoys playing collegiate football and being a student athlete. Second and six. And here he is again. You can catch him at Drizzy Drez Six. And it's fun getting on campus, Mark. And I was watching practice Thursday in Salt Lake City and talking to Coach Erickson. And like any good wide receiver will do, he comes over into the conversation and says, <laughs> are you going to be calling my name and number Saturday night? I promise you that. A little swagger. Got to have it. First and ten. Here he is again on the receiver screen. But a nice block on the edge from Anthony Denham. Meanwhile, Murphy shaken up after he made that last catch. He has the ice on, as reported by Lewis Johnson. And he looks like he's uh, heading into the locker room. And Wesley Tonga, their number two tight end, and ice on his knee earlier. It's so probably, as I said, not a surprise. You go to the strength end of your team. Dennis likes his tight ends, but he really likes the playmaking of Anderson. Wilson, out of the backfield, complete. Fakia Lotonga. Lotonga, number four on the depth chart, with his first reception of the game. And another first down. And what have you seen in this drive? You saw Van Noy heat it up. You see BYU start to try to dictate. So Dennis Erickson says, I'll get the ball out of my quarterback's hands. Completed 10 of his last 11, and most of them of the very quick variety. From the 12. Keeps it himself. Good straight arm, but pushed out of bounds. Rocked out of bounds, and what a hit by Craig Bills. Sent him careening over the signage there on the sidelines, Brock. Look at this. That's clean. Yeah. That's within the field of play, and the impact just drives him all the way into the student body. Second and ten. Twelfth play of the drive for the Utes. Anderson to the bottom of your screen. Wilson into the end zone, incomplete, and a flag thrown. It was intended for Anthony Denham. And they're going to get a first down out of this. That's Kyle Whittingham, what he's learned about his team. Lacks some identity a season ago. First non-bowl season for Kyle Winningham in his nine years. Defense interference, defense number 20. The penalty puts the ball at the spot of the foul, first down. And he said, this is a group of high character and been resilient all season long. And this, I think, a pretty obvious call. Contact there, you reach, you grab, you do it in front of the officials. Unfortunately, that was the safety Bills who knew he was out leveraged instead of giving up the touchdown. Now looking at a first and goal. A score here, a touchdown would be huge for the Utes. A little bit of breathing room here in the fourth quarter. Wilson, complete. Touchdown, Utah. Paul Williams out of the backfield. Both touchdowns of the exact same variety. Lots of eyes and focus. On the inside, on Drez Anderson, on the crossing routes that Utah loves to run. And that's twice now the Utes have snuck their back out of the backfield, outflanked the defense, an easy pitch and catch. And what a response offensively by Utah. And the Utes now with a 14 point lead. And Travis Williams, once again, clutch money here late in the game. As Williams hauls it in for the score. 20 to 6 Utah with a little more breathing room. 14 point lead here just underway in the fourth quarter. And uh, that is the thumb of the Utah quarterback Trevor Wilson. Pardon me Travis Wilson. And uh, Travis uh, has taken some blows tonight. And he's got the blood to prove it. Blood on the neck. That's what happens when you get jacked up yeah. in some of the run game. He's taken some shots, but continues to stand strong in that pocket. From the goal line, this is Hina. And they tried to get the edge, instead pushed out of bounds, shy of the 25 at about the 21 yard line. Hill gonna take off for the first down, get it. 
and then some steps out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line. You know, it was interesting philosophy that Bronco Mendenhall talked about when stockpiling his team and how he recruits Williams, one of those speed players. You know, there, there are there isn't an abundance of of guys that run four fours and four threes on BYU squad. Will versus skill. And this is Hill. Gains about two yards, but what are your thoughts on, on what his philosophy is, and, and ultimately, does it work? Well, it was a good conversation, and I said to Bronco, the teams that run this system, so up-tempo, think about them. Oklahoma State, Oregon, Texas A&M, what do they have? They have speed at so many spots and positions. Are you going to be able to recruit enough speed on the perimeter? And he felt like quarterback and running back would set the tone and alleviate so much of that. Taysom Hill fires incomplete, intended for Skyler Ridley. And Cody Hoffman... One of their more prolific receivers, even him, and not not really a blazer. You know, third and eight coming up. Hill, 13 of 31 passing tonight. Downfield, incomplete, and no flag on the play. Michael Walker defending Thornton. And it's fourth and long. They'll have to punt. And Thornton did his very best to try to draw that penalty. That's into double coverage. The nickelback running stride for stride. The safety sitting over the top. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any penalty there. No. I think he could tell that ball was going to be outside of his reach. Tried the drama one on one. Didn't get the call. Norwood back at his own 15-yard line. Alano punting from his 28 line drive you know the silence here is pretty deafening Utah's put a silencer on the sellout crowd here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium Van Noy trying to change that defensively maybe on this next sequence those are the images around town I tell you we were at the restaurant communal last night and Morrow hooked us up and I tell you that's what it looked like in the restaurant, red and blue. Families divided, families sitting on opposite sides of the table. First down and 10. See if Travis Wilson can close the sale here. Poole brought down for a loss on the play. Nice tackle by Tyler Beck in the backfield. Travis Wilson has uh, faced a couple of high pressure cooker situations already. Late in games. This would be a signature win for him. Young quarterback trying to find his way, just a sophomore. Been a trying couple of weeks for quarterback Travis Wilson. Second and 14. Hands it off again to Poole. Poole brought down. After a gain about two, talking about Wilson in the heartfelt week that he's had, he uh, flew back to Los Angeles, actually California, where yeah, where he's from, where he attended the funeral of his friend Nick Pasquale, the UCLA football player that perished last week. Dedicated his performance last week in that game against Oregon State to his late friend. BYU's defense needs to stop here. Wilson long, incomplete. Almost a circus catch by Drez Anderson. Instead, they'll have to punt. And Wilson took a hit, too. That's our boy Van Noy, our impact player, who has been very, very active. Travis's ribs going to be sore tomorrow. But that was a big time throw. He had a go route earlier on the previous possession that went out of bounds wide to Anderson. That's one that Anderson's gonna, gonna make and finish on the other end. That was big time. Paul Slev had a great punt return last time. See if he can do it again here. Calls for the fair catch of the 44. You surprised they didn't try and kick away from him? Maybe, maybe not. 39-yard punt, nothing on the return. BYU got to make a move when we come back. 
BYU Cougars trailing by 14 points with just 702 to go in the fourth quarter Mark Jones along with Brock Heward Lewis Johnson down on the sidelines and if you're just joining us Jamal Williams starting tailback for the Cougars was taken off the field on a stretcher and taken to a local hospital being examined he was able to move his extremities that's what his mom told our Lewis Johnson down on the sidelines so in that respect we've got some good news emerging from that situation but on the field they are in some dire need of some firepower like Williams a sack back at the 48 yard line by Nate Orchard well this front four has been the story the front seven in particular for Utah throw the linebackers into the mix as solid as they've been as well they have really controlled this pocket and made BYU one dimensional the stage we're not ready for that yet well completes the pass to Brown and the Brown uh, going to be whistled down before the fumble third down coming up for the Cougars they went for it on fourth down the last time they had the ball unable to convert kind of surprised by the relative silence of Cody Hoffman tonight Brock third down coming up Hill overshoots his receiver pass incomplete intended for Freel and a flag thrown a really late flag thrown Eric Rowe was in the vicinity and the players looked like they were jaw jacking at each other after the play was over unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense number number 18 that's a 15 yard penalty automatic first down would have been a fourth down clean 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 that's all clean and now you're starting to taunt no really I mean come on now he's just saying that's no flag yep Hill scrambling. Falslev has the first down and then some inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. Well, I think you're exactly right, Mark. I think that's exactly what he's saying. And I say that almost tongue in cheek, but right. that's that's going to draw the penalty in this day and age we live in. And now you're giving BYU life. And if you've learned anything about these rivalry games over the last decade, they've come down to one possession many times. Why? Because of plays like that where you're off the field on third and ten. Hill complete. Hoffman with the catch and run. Picked up a block. Reaching, lunging. And they mark it at the one yard line. But what a determined effort by Cody Hoffman. Picked up 12. Boy, he might have scored. With plenty of time left. 519. Hoffman and Hill back on the field. With the rest of the BYU offense trying to punch it in here on first and goal and if you want it you've got one-on-one -on -one. everybody is packed in one-on-one -on -one in the bottom off with a big target at 6-4 they run it instead and Elisa scores the touchdown BYU still alive Great effort that time by Michael Elisa. And now the extra point again from Sorensen. I can at least understand that call with indisputable visual evidence allowing the call on the field to stand. Five thirteen to go. The Utes will get the football back. And for sophomore quarterback. Travis Wilson five and five as a starter can he close the deal for the Utes on a kick return it's McClellan hands it off to Poole and Bubba Poole putting two hands on that football and a nice gain of about nine close to that first down 
Under five minutes to go. Both teams with a full complement of three timeouts remaining. Utah trying to make it four consecutive wins against their rivals along Interstate 15. Second and one. Poole approaching 100 yards rushing tonight. At 117 last week. Can BYU get the defensive stop that they need right now? Wilson pulls the trigger incomplete. Boy, Dres Anderson was thinking about running before he caught it. And it's third and long. Wilson has missed on his last four passes, although he didn't get much help that time. They set up the screen well. Poole got a block, but didn't get enough for the first down. The defense wins that challenge. Van Noy in on the stop again. Number three, ubiquitous all over the field tonight. And it's fourth down. That's a screen pass away, and that's all effort. And that's Kyle saying, I've lost to this team in red three times. I don't want to go out as a senior coming back to school. Had a draft eligible grade of a second round pick. Decided to turn that down to come back to school. Been relentless from beginning to end tonight. Clock running as we approach three minutes to go. Hackett standing at his own 15. Paul Sleff back at his 25. He's going to let this one bounce. And it's going to be down to the 37. A 33-yard punt, nothing on the return. Coming up next, college football final presented by AT&T. Well, this pretty much fits the script, doesn't it? I mean, six of the last eight meetings between these two teams have gone down to the final play, the final possession. And with 2.49 to go, BYU with a chance. overthrown by a mile intended for Cody Hoffman a bad miss by Taysom Hill and Paul Paul Apoy with one of his first shots all night long on Taysom Hill couldn't come in a better time for the Utes Hill completes this one right back to the same guy Cody Hoffman First down, working against Orfe, picked up 15. I love it. It's game time. What are you going to do? Go to your best player. Did it on the previous drive. They try on first down on the out route, that time on the slant. Make Utah prove they can stop them. Hill over the middle, complete. Number two again. Hoffman picks up 12. Sometimes the game is terribly complex. Other times, it's really, really simple. You gotta ask yourself, where was this earlier? Hoffman now over 100 yards receiving tonight. Went back to the well one more time, incomplete. Stops the clock with 2.14 to go. We saw a double move earlier with Drez Anderson, the big play that Utah had right before halftime, the slant and go. You've hit this slant, you've hit this slant. You wonder if there's an opportunity with Hoffman to make that same double move against man coverage. Hill with a nice fake, but he's brought down. And a nice open field tackle by Hale. Wow, got him by the shoelaces. That's a tremendous tackle. Something you didn't see from Texas all night long. Well done at a critical moment. Fifth sack of the night for the defense, third and 13. Hill down the middle, incomplete, broken up, no flag on the play. Michael Walker there to make it fourth and 13. 
Eric Thornton, the intended target. Make sure you get to your best play here. Your tempo and timing, not more important, should not trump. That's a good call, throws behind. Your best play call in this moment. A stop for the defense here, and it's pretty much ball game, you would think. BYU to stay alive right here. Down the middle. Intercepted. Walker. And the smattering of fans in red that have made the 50-mile trip down Interstate 15 making a little bit of noise here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. That may have sealed the Cougars' faith. That's their first interception of the season, in fact. And it's something that Coach Winningham had talked about. And BYU is trying to clear this out for your big-time receiver to come into play. And unfortunately, Taysom thinks he's got that clear route. Safety sitting right behind. You saw Hoffman, if he could have just hesitated for a second longer, move those chains. BYU with a couple of timeouts remaining. And Wilson gets back to the line of scrimmage, may have lost a yard on the play. At what point does BYU burn their timeouts? Let's do a little bit of math. 132 to go. They're going to burn one. But it hasn't been pretty tonight for either quarterback. Second and 12. Hands it off to Poole, who stopped up immediately by Van Noy. Well, that's one guy that going to grade out, you'd think, pretty well after tonight's game. Third down coming up. And another final now timeout taken by BYU. Poole with the handoff, short of the first down. This will get down the, under 40 seconds. They'll get the ball back. BYU will. But where and with how much time? Be about, I think you're going to take a timeout right before this play clock runs out. And you can see it around that 40-second mark. You're going to have to punt it in this matchup and in this rivalry game. <laughs> who knows what's going to happen and how the ball will bounce. It's never in the bag. Look at BYU. <laughs> going to come after a little bit. And the fair catch called by Falslev at the 47-yard line. 32 seconds to go. Nothing but a touchdown will do for BYU. Been a miserable night passing the football. Let's just be honest for Taysom Hill. 18 of 44. No touchdowns and one interception. But there's still time to change the final script. Passing off the hands of his receiver, Hoffman, incomplete. Should have caught it. Stops the clock with 27 seconds to go. BYU, no timeouts remaining. Four receivers in on the pattern. Hill on the loose, heaves it, incomplete, harmlessly at the 12-yard line. Hoffman again, the intended receiver, third down, 17 seconds to go. And Hoffman is gassed. Remember, he's battled that hamstring coming back. He is tired at the top of the screen. Hill flushed out again. Under duress. Has a man downfield. Hoffman battling incomplete at the three. And BYU has run it down to its last final five seconds for head coach the stoic Mendenhall on the sidelines. A last gasp effort coming up for the Cougars. A mixed look of hope and helplessness from their fans. Hill is going to have to heave this one in the end zone, but they flush him out. He barely gets it off.
incomplete and no flag on the play as Mitch Matthews was in the area and a chorus of boos raining down on the officials as Hoffman fought off the defender check that Matthews fought off the defender so Utah now with its fourth consecutive win against its rivals BYU You're going to see receiver DB tangled up. Oh, he pulled the, the defender into him. He sure did. He's, he's trying to fight to get the call, and they're going back and forth. That's a smart move by Matthews. And the official's getting that one right as it plunks Matthews on the ground. The fans wanted the penalty. Obviously, Van Noy wanted it, but Matthews just as guilty there, the culprit. In a wild finish, why not, in this <laughs> in this rivalry. Came down to the it's last play. Seen it all. So Utah wins its fourth in a row against BYU, and it's ninth in the last 12. Van Noy will not know what it's like to defeat them. He won't see the 96th edition. That's the wrap. Utah wins it 20 to 13 up next college football final for Lewis Johnson Brock Ewart. I'm Mark Jones saying good night from Provo Utah.